These... Right, let's be quick. <laughs> These books suck. Don't read them. That's how yeah. I was going to start with. Yeah. I've got 13 books that absolutely sucked. You've got five books. We're going to tell you our worst reads for whatever the year was last year because I didn't even catch up. What is it? Go. Hut, hut. Well, I DNF'd 31 books last year and I'm only going to talk about three of them. Good. Uh, that's 13.2% of my reading and I just want to say one of my goals for next year before I get into it one of my goals for next year is to get that DNF ratio up to above 20% mm. yeah I want to DNF more I start with my DNFs and the first book I want to talk about is The Executioner's Song by Norman Mailer this book look this book has definitely become worse as I have found out just how much of a horrible human being Norman Mailer was. This is a like a true story, a true crime novel about uh, one man who has murdered these people and his journey on death row. But it's so long and so slow. It's like Mailer has done all of this research and he wants to include it in the novel. And it's just, it takes forever to get to the point. And then, on top of taking forever, Mailer actually just can't be bothered writing new text and copies and pastes old text. So, like, he's just, he's, like, properly repeating himself, like, actually repeating himself to no end. That sounds boring. Yeah. So, oh, it was absolutely horrible. The Yakubian Building. Uh, I read it for The Invisible Cities for Egypt, and it was just so, so misogynist. Just... Yeah. Like, oh my goodness me. And so I, I ended up reading um, A Woman at Point Zero again, which was so feminist. And I thought that that was a really lovely switch. The last book I DNF'd, I think, is just one of the most lacking books I have ever come across. And it's Fake Account by Lauren Euler. Uh, a story about a woman whose boyfriend is in some alt-right movement that really didn't do anything or say anything interesting at all and for something that is meant to be somewhat funny just didn't deliver a single joke and this parody was not no patricia lockwood yeah no patricia lockwood no no humor no there was no winging of yourself in the uh, middle of the night yeah yeah wait what <laughs> i didn't actually wear myself oh Oh, but I have to say, last night, I am reading, like, this horribly sad, queer, coming-of-age book. Nell is reading Patricia Lockwood, and, like, I'm deep in this scene where this woman is, like, struggling with her acceptance and her parents hating her, and, like, I'm like, oh, this is so sad. And Nell is like, ah! It was funny. It was funny. I just kept looking at her going... You asshole! You're a, you're a horrible human. <laughs> it's not my fault you were reading a sad book and I was reading a funny one. We're going to keep going through my books. We're going to do all of mine and then the one book we share on both of our list and then all of yours. The first book I read for the year that makes this list is The Memory Police by Yoko Aguaga. I just was completely and utterly bored by a book that really the only positive thing I can say about it was it was atmospheric and I didn't care I did not care about this world I did not care about the characters I did not care about the themes and the structures it's like if she's it. a bit of a chameleon because then you can still try her other books um yeah and like if you don't like slow paced books like proper slow paced books give that one a skip the next one is The Plague by Elber Camus I do not get along with Camus writing I understand that Camus is not actually writing about what he's talking about he's you know talking about philosophy and trying to put all these other themes in there which to be honest is something that every author does so I don't know why I'm saying that Camus is different but Camus can't write women and to give him complete credit he must know that because he doesn't even try and it's just Oh, I, I have actually expunged a lot of this from my brain. So to actually give you a competent review of what I What's didn't next? Like. Last year I read uh, A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James and absolutely adored that book and thought the sun shone out of uh, Marlon James's butt. And so I picked up Black Leopard Red Wolf and I knew that it had mixed reviews on it and I just assumed that I would love 
it because Marlon James and I really could not get this was a real swing and a miss by James I could see what he was trying to do he just did I just make a sports reference on booktube it should be illegal. Yeah, I know. I should have some sort of punishment for that. Booktube jail. I mean, I don't. I don't agree with fines because that's just classist. But jail. Everybody. Can I go was to jail. just going to beat you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Black leopard, red wolf was just. It was just like nonsense that didn't run together. You didn't like it. I didn't like it. Needed a firming agent in it. The dystopian we. It's often called the first dystopian, which is. Um, historically inaccurate and i don't know why people say that it was just a completely terrible book <laughs> as as a story goes it it failed it failed on plot and it failed on characters and it it like it just was completely lacking in those things cool idea it just needed a different writer to execute it Panazi. oh my god i don't want to hear you talk about Panazi again yeah. My brain will explode. I it do is. not understand why so many people love this book. So many people are like, oh, well, they give it the review of, I'm not sure I understood everything in this book. I'm like, really? really? What? Like, there wasn't a lot in it. Do you think that maybe instead of going over your head, it went under your head and you're trying to give it the benefit of the doubt? This was like a completely inept and lacking book. And then Bernadine Evaristo said it was the best one on the woman's prize, which is frankly insulting when you look at the you know, massive amounts of talent that was on that prize. Scott has very subtle opinions. I, I cannot, this book has, you know, you know when people start to praise a book you didn't like and it gets worse in your head the more you think about it because you see that praise? Yeah. This is Piranazi. It could have just been a bad book that I forgot about, but... But everyone has said good things like, about it. it's and good. I will say... Now that, you're like, do you like eating poop as well? Yeah. yeah, I just, I just can't, I don't get it. Like, I I cannot see a single thing in that book that is redeeming. Oh, no, that's a complete, that's, that, that's just getting a bit worked up, Scott. It just didn't do the things that I value. And I, this idea that it is an intelligent and clever book, I flat out reject. <sighs> Who's next? The Woman in the Dunes. This was a Japanese classic and it was very, if you like Kafka, you will probably love this book. I, however, oh, don't like Kafka. Don't like Kafka. Random. Anyone remotely surrealist. Kafka is not cat. surrealist. Is not real. Like it's just like they never answer the questions in what yeah. they're doing. They just they get hung up on this. Like they're in this house. There is no way to escape the house. They're given everything they need, and this man is expected to couple up with the woman in the dunes and you know make love to her and she's meant to look after him and all of this sort of stuff and they never sort of answer why and i get it it's, it's deeply philosophical and it's an alleg and, and and what's it what's it the a metaphor metaphor for life or, or society rather or, or how our relationships are but i'm just like yeah okay um could we not spend the entire book on this one metaphor could we like move it along a bit which is often how I feel about Kafka. I'm like, you've done your thing. It was one scene, not an entire book. Escape from Baghdad. I read this as part of my, let's see how many books on script I can read. I think this one was compared to like Catch-22, which I love Catch-22. And I know not everybody loves Catch-22, but I think Catch-22 is hilarious. So I'm like, yes, I can get down for it. If it's, if it's not anti-war enough, it'll be funny, you know? Yeah. And it wasn't funny. And when you write a comedy, yeah. if you're not funny, you're a failure. Yeah. And this was a big fail. Uh, a Horse Walks Into a Bar was the story of a stand-up comic going through a mental breakdown on stage. This is the second book that Nell picked for me in a reading experiment that's made my worst of the year. Uh... That that reading experiment the, w was a fail, but it was fun. That that was worse than when I decided to read whatever script told me to read, no matter what the like. Mm. Yeah, I picked a lot of risky you, books. You picked some risky books that I did not like, and this one was just. It was again. If you're going to tell a comedy, you've got to make sure the jokes are funny and not like bad cliche jokes in with a character that was poorly drawn in all honesty the the last one before we get to the one that we share that i have is the sweetness of water which was on the booker long list i just don't understand 
I think this is a debut novel and honestly I want to like just give it back to Nathan Harris and go go just just edit it a bit more and and make your characters real and it just it really lacked in in any measure that I can put on this book it was it was below average the most consistently all-round bad book I have read in a long long time and I don't mean so I said consistently bad I mean lacking of anything that I can praise in it there was it was just like the most blandest book ever do we want to go to the one that we both hated yeah we've done a full review on it so we don't really need to talk very long we haven't uploaded it yet and it's six months old (laughs) we might not upload it Maybe we should. Maybe we should. I don't know. Would you like to see us review second place for Rachel Cusk, knowing... Knowing we're not going to say anything positive at all. Yeah. Uh, I just think that this was a book, like, completely lacking in ambition. I think you're completely wrong. I think it was endlessly pretentious, very ambitious, and I didn't give a fuck what it said. I thought it was pretentious. I just didn't think it had ambition. And... That it was trying really hard to be something I didn't care about. I actually think it might have even been successful at what it was trying to do. It just didn't care. Didn't care about what it was trying to do. And the only people that care are the author and whoever she masturbates with. Because... It's like the epitome of white feminism. Just like self-congratulatory. Look, I know these. Just gross. Yeah. Did not enjoy. Next on my list is... Under the Udala Tree, which we read as a buddy read, both of us, with Courtney Ferrida, no one liked it. It was... The major problem with it was the the central character had, like, massive shifts in motivations and changes of mind, and there was no interiority to explain why. There was no external activity to explain why. The, The character would just, like, massively pivot their choices for no visible reason i think that was the major flaw with the book there were many others but that was that was the biggest thing i'll agree with that but just before filming we watched courtney's best tea and worst he said it didn't make her list and it didn't make my list so i i think you, ultimately, you found it worse than we did yes but also i had a really good reading year like i i have five out of 72 on my list one of them i dnf you have two books you dnf'd and you've only picked one of them as well well, I I really yeah. I'll you don't. About, you I'll don't talk feel... about that when I get to that book. But one of them I DNF'd, and probably the only other book that I could even potentially add to this list is a memoir. And I think criticizing memoir uh, because it's not interesting enough is weird because it's a person's <laughs> life that you're like, I wish there'd been more trauma in this. And I actually just think that it's pitched wrong rather than the book being bad. I think it was advertised badly. I just had a really good reading year. So my standard for a bad book is, you know, a couple of books that I read quite late in the year. The Mad Woman's Ball I read because uh, it sounded cool. It was about a woman who wouldn't be obedient and her very wealthy father put her in a mental institution. Yeah, that sounds interesting. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Set in Paris in, like, the 1800s. You know, sounds really quite like a good book, except it wasn't. It just wasn't. Lots of info dumping, lots of reducing of mental health issues to, like, cliches. It had so much potential and it just didn't fulfil any of it. I it, it needed to be significantly longer. It needed to be significantly more compl- complex. It, it just needed more finesse. So it was a bit of a waste of time, unfortunately. So much like I said about we, good idea, different author needed to write it? Yeah, yeah. Miss Peregrine's, what's it called? School for Peculiar Children. School for Peculiar Children. I I bought you that for a Christmas present. You did, and I read it as my last book of the year in 2021, and it was fine. It wasn't. The plot wasn't super interesting. I didn't really like the characters. I didn't think the world building was that great, and there was, like, proofreading errors throughout that just shat me to tears. Yeah. Halfway through it, I was I had to call Kieran and ask him if taking the piss and taking a piss had different connotations in Wales because there was a persistent error in how that language was used. And is, is it, taking the piss is that 
Is that a... That's not a universal thing. Um, I don't think they say it in America. They... But they say taking the mick or something like that. Yes. And and that was the phrase that they were trying to use in the book. But they kept saying taking a piss, which is taking a wee. Yeah. Like, it's not the same meaning. And they're not interchangeable. And it was, like, consistent throughout the novel that that error was made. And... Uh, I like part of, part of me was like, is this setting up a joke that this character is going to get <laughs> mocked for using the expression wrong, or like what is going on? But it was just an error, and it was really annoying. And when that is the thing you're taking away from a book, it's not great. Yeah, like uh, whoever the publishers were. But it, even just like there should be something to distract me from that, and they're really I. Mm. Uh, and then. The last book on my list is one of two books I DNF'd this year. I also DNF'd The Prophets. I might give that another go in the future. I feel very much like it wasn't what I was expecting it to be. I think that's a consistent problem. When a book is not what you expect it to be, it's never going to... It's really hard to readjust, I think. And I I think that it's potentially of good enough quality that I might give it another go and have a better experience. So that's why it's not on this list. But the other book I DNF'd this year was Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows, which I just found really dull. Boring. Yeah, it was. It was really boring. It was really boring. I wasn't interested. I didn't like the characters. I could see what the central conflict was and I didn't care. The points that it was trying to make in regards to, like, sexual agency and feminism and that sort of stuff were boring. Well... That's the end of the list. If you've read any of the books on our worst of lists and you like them, tell us what you got out of them. Yes. 